Next company today is Manjira Digital Systems. Manjira is a DSP R&D house designing next generation computing architectures for high performance computing. They address the bottlenecks of existing processor, coprocessor, accelerator architectures. We have amongst us the founder himself, Mr. Venu Kadandai. Venu, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Are you there? Yeah, uh, can you see me? Yes, now I can see you. Thank you for joining us today. Now the stage is all yours. Thank you. Um, I would like to share a presentation that I have. Um, uh, I, I will uh, uh, briefly introduce our products. Uh, then uh, we'll follow that up with a, a demo, which one of my colleagues will uh, uh, run the demo. So I would like to share my screen. Now, by the way, Aditya, are you there? Are you able to log in? So will you also join the thing? Yes. I'm not able to see any Mr. Aditya here. Aditya Romala. Just give me a minute, I'll uh, check with him. He's not here, we are working from home. Yeah, now I can see. Welcome, Mr. Aditya. Thank you, thank you. So, oh, okay, you're there, right, thank you. So let me, uh, I'm uh, sharing my screen. Now, can you see a presentation? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, first of all, um, uh, thanks to IESA for giving me an opportunity to present our uh, products here. Uh, we are Manjira Digital Systems, a uh, uh, high performance compute IP company. Uh, I'll briefly tell you about the IP that we have. Um, we This is uh, what is called a universal multifunction accelerator based on a new computing methodology and architecture. This is a patent technology. And uh, using this, we can accelerate algorithms or an, a range of uh, you know, applications like uh, starting from signal processing to artificial intelligence and computer vision, multimedia, you name it, any of these algorithms can be accelerated with this. So we already uh, validated this both in silicon and uh, on FPGA, and uh, this technology is also customer validated. So we have some customers using this technology for a variety of applications. We have fabricated a chip at a 28 nanometer node. This is a baseband processor using GMA, and we are building Navic receivers, uh, that is uh, GNSS, Indian GNSS receivers, using this baseband chip. And this baseband chip is a generic baseband chip, and it can be used for other communication applications as well. Our focus uh, these days is mostly on AI. We have built an AI inference engine to start with on, an FP, on FPGAs. Uh, we partner with Intel in building uh, uh, accelerators for data centers using their FPGS. Uh, this accelerator provides very high performance, marculating performance, uh, beating uh, the top uh, GPUs by an order of magnitude. And uh, the, most importantly, these are programmable in the sense just by changing the software, you can use it applic applications in either image analytics or uh, natural language processing, or even uh, time series analysis that you often encounter in the BFSI sector. Uh, what we offer is an IP uh, for either ASIC or FPGA. Uh, we also offer solutions on FPGA, and we moving forward, we plan to do silicon on this. This is briefly about our technology. 
And as far as the AI accelerator that we do, uh, uh, that we provide, uh, concerned, these are the details here. Your accelerator, uh, the EMA based accelerator is in the hardware. It could be FPGA or uh, ASIC. And uh, on top of it, we have built all the relevant software to make it easy for the customers to use this accelerator. Most importantly, uh, the customer can use a pre-trained model in any of these uh, uh, platforms like TensorFlow or PyTorch, Keras, ONNX, any of those platforms. Uh, and then uh, the input data could be images, speech, or any time series data. Now, you, user can build applications using high-level languages such as Python, or Go, or C++, and we provide APIs for each of the languages that um, the user is interested in, uh, which will allow user to convert the model trained in any of these platforms to a model that runs on our accelerator. We call it EMA model. So we provide a model converter API, and we provide uh, you know, inference API, and so on. On the hardware, in addition to our accelerator, you have uh, uh, software layers like you know, uh, a library of EMA primitives, which essentially use EMA instructions. Uh, and uh, there are basic functions that you encounter in all these AI algorithms we are talking about. And also a model execution layer, layer which understands the converted EMA model and hence uh, and appropriately uses the primitives to run the accelerator. So that way, this is a completely software convertible, uh, software programmable model. You don't need to change the accelerator, whether it is in FPGA or in ASIC. Uh, you can accelerate almost any AI topology using this. And the user need not know anything about the hardware, EMA instructions, or um, for to program EMA and so on, uh, because we provide software, uh, sorry, high level language callable uh, APIs. And uh, we are going to show a demo. Uh, the demo arrangement that Aditya is going to uh, show now consists of a, a Dell Rack server to which, on which you have uh, some uh, Intel software, and then TensorFlow, right now we are using TensorFlow platform and Python in which the application is built. In addition, we, uh, we also have our model converter uh, code and then other APIs and an example application. To, in this, through the PCI slot, we connect uh, Intel FPGA, uh, Statix 10 uh, GX2800, uh, which is a programmable accelerator card. And on this FPGA, we have built the bit file of our AI accelerator, and um, uh, we dump that uh, bit file on the FPGA. And then the uh, EMA primitives library and EMA model execution layer. These are all uh, um, uh, downloaded onto the FPGA card. And uh, then uh, the typical application flow looks like this. You first load the bit file onto the uh, FPGA. If it is uh, ASIC, of course, there is no such step. And then convert the selected model using model converter API, whatever uh, AI model or AI topology that you want to accelerate. And then uh, load the converted model onto the uh, uh, accelerator using model load API. And then use the inference API to start running uh, the inference using uh, by loading the data and performing the inference on the accelerator. And you get the very high performance in terms of uh, uh, extreme low latencies and very high throughputs uh, this way. And if you have more data, you go back and call the, uh, as, for example, in the case of the streaming application as the data is coming, you can keep calling the inference API as the data is coming again. And of course, if you uh, uh, want to load a new model, all you need to do is uh, go back, uh, take the pre-trained model and use model converter API to convert into EMA model and dump it on the accelerator. So uh, this is as simple. You don't need to change the hardware and you can accelerate a range of uh, AI uh, algorithms using this uh, um, accelerator 
without uh, having to do anything to the hardware and getting extreme high performance for all the uh, algorithms you want to accelerate. Uh, so we will show a few demos. Uh, one of them uh, is a street speech transcription uh, demo. Uh, this is a modular D speech. It's a very huge model. It has six layers, including a bi LSTM layer. The model size is about 235 MB. Uh, and uh, Aditya, uh, can you take over and run the uh, demo? Yes. Uh, you need to share your screen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So Alice is running this uh, demo uh, on a server, which is uh, in our um, office here. And of course, Aditya is uh, not in Hyderabad. <laughs> he is in Vizag, but from, from there he is logging and running this. So uh, this we have a nice uh, uh, GUI for this uh, model uh, uh, for uh, uh, running the speech transcription demo. Uh, he is trying to launch the GUI. Okay. So the GUI has features wherein you can provide, uh, at this moment, we provide the stored uh, speech uh, file. Uh, and then uh, he will also play audio to uh, parallelly. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. Uh, the speech is run asynchronously, so you, you may not uh, see much of a uh, synchronization there. Uh, you, just for you are can, uh, understanding how the file is, the speech is uh, run, uh, the audio is run. But what you see here is uh, in the table, you have, a, I mean, the algorithm automatically segments the speech into convenient parts and give it to, gives it to the accelerator. This uh, uh, inference API keeps taking these chunks and give, keeps giving it to the accelerator. So you, you take different uh, lengths of the speech depending on where the gap is in the speech and something like 100, uh, 1549 milliseconds length speech is transcribed in 256 milliseconds. So this is real time performance. And if you compare with some of the top uh, GPUs of uh, uh, GPUs in the market, uh, you see that it is uh, up to 5x faster than this in this particular uh, algorithm. Uh, and uh, you, you can see that one second stream somewhere down 950 second millisecond, 952 millisecond stream is transcribed in approximately 161 milliseconds. So this is real time transcription of the speech. Uh, so Aditya, can we run other algorithms? Yes. Okay. So uh, what Aditya will do now is uh, quit the GUI and uh, on the same hardware, the hardware, the, the bit file of our AI accelerator is already on the target click FPGA. Now he is going to run uh, multiple algorithms. Uh, we have seen Mozilla this switch running. Now uh, to tell you how exactly you can use these APIs, how simple it is, we'll show that we are running several other algorithms having different types of uh, 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 layers in it. Um, so, Aditya, can you run any one of them? Something which has uh, uh, something like LSTM layer? Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so the model converter, you can see here that I identified that it has uh, two LSTM layers and a fully connected layer, and uh, it has only one time step in this. Uh, and uh, uh, then the model conversion is what he has run now. Uh, then uh, can you run the inference? He provides some data, which is already stored. Uh, so, uh, you see that it took 141 microseconds for this model for, to transcribe. That means uh, in a streaming mode, it can do more than 7,000 such streams per second. Uh, uh, then you can even increase, uh, run uh, different uh, uh, batch sizes. Can you make batch size something like, yeah, whatever you choose. Okay, a batch size of six. Now six at a time are running uh, in parallel. So your throughput has gone to 20,000 streams per second. This is extreme high performance. And uh, it, this sort of uh, models are used for time series analysis uh, for uh, applications such as fraud detection and so on. Can you run one more model which has uh, some time steps as well? Yes. I think model zero or something like that. Okay, so the model conversion is done. This has 24 layers, two GRU layers and remaining, sorry, it has 14 layers, two GRU layers and 12 FC layers and 25 time steps. Now, can you run inference in this on this? You just call the inference uh, API, provide the, uh, that where the input data is, and then this is accelerated. You can see that it took uh, for all the 25 time steps and 14 layers and 25 time steps, it took uh, 3.5 seconds to run this. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, 3.5 milliseconds, and hence you have uh, 2,279. Uh, streams per second is what you can do. Of course, you can run this in batch mode as well. So uh, this way you can run any model, you just pick it and uh, uh, do the model conversion and run it on the accelerator. It is as simple as this and building any type of an application uh, is very straightforward and easy. So that's what we have today to demo uh, in, in the given uh, time slot. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Aditya. So I can answer if there are any questions. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we don't have any questions and answers in this session. So, but we'll get back to you if we receive any questions. Thank you, sir. Thanks to IESA once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you.